Welcome to Belmont Banter, the official podcast of Whitstable Town FC. Every week we chat to ex-players, supporters and invited guests here on Belmont Banter. Well, hello again, everyone. And this evening, or today rather, we've got uh, Tommy Sampson's joined us. Now, Tommy Sampson has had a very varied and interesting and long career, not only as a football manager, which a lot of you will know him as, but as a footballer and also as a husband and a survivor. Now, Tommy, we're going to talk about your early days. I'd like you to start your sort of earliest re- re- recollection of, of football. Well, my earliest re- re- recollection was really my father took me to my father was in the haulage business and had lots of contacts and my mother and father got divorced in 61 so my father would take me one week to arsenal one week to west ham one week to tottenham and it was fantastic time you know they was when i was seven eight years of age they were my first impressions i fell in love with the game the one game that I can always remember was when Tottenham did the double in 60-61, they had no one to play in a charity shield because they'd won both the competitions. And they played an England eleven at White Hart Lane. And my father took me. Tottenham won 3-2, which meant I was a Tottenham supporter for life from that moment. Some of the players in that England team, the goalkeeper was Ron Springett, and in the, the defenders, Ron Flowers, Brian LeBone, and a very, very, uh, how can I put it? A very, very portly right back in Don Howe. Yeah, in midfield, Johnny Haynes. Oh, wow. Brian Douglas, Eddie Clayton. Up front, Derek Kevin, Jerry Hitchens, Bobby Charlton. And I saw that game that day. and. That was it. There was 25, 30,000 people at White Hart Lane. And I just wanted to be part of that. I wanted to know what that feeling was like, playing in front of all those people. Unfortunately, in my general football career, I never quite managed to play in front. I played in front of 25,000 people in a testimonial for a lad at Millwall who was a great friend of mine and still is, Billy Neal. He's a legend at Millwall. And we played West Ham at the Den in front of 20,000 people. And in the West Ham side was Bobby Moore, Trevor Brooking, Pop Robson played up front. And they just signed Alan Taylor, who was to get two goals in the FA Cup final against Fulham. People like John McDowell, Clyde Best. And I looked around the stadium zone. All I could see was people fighting. (laughs) <laughs> it was amazing they wouldn't allow it nowadays Millwall no. versus West Ham no absolutely but you know it was a fantastic evening I'll never forget it Carry I on. went in to get Bobby Moore's autograph walked in their dressing room walked up to him he was naked but for a towel across him and I said Mr Moore can I have your autograph please and he autographed my programme and you know what, Tony? I've lost it. Over those years, oh. so many house moves, yeah. can't find it anywhere. And I, I know it will turn up one day in a suitcase. Yeah, yeah. I've got thousands. I never threw a program away. Whenever I played, if it was like non-league, I spent many years playing for Dart, and I would throw the program in my kit bag. And at the end of the night, or the end of the journey, when we came home, I'd put it in a box. I've got suitcases full of programs, Tony. I can imagine. Sandy, Sandy hates it. I keep <laughs> saying to her, can you go and find me a, a so-and-so program from 1975? Oh. She says, Tom, you've got to be joking. There's a thousand programs. <laughs> They're all in storage now because we can't, haven't got the room where we live. But one day I'll go through them, Tony. Well, now you just... Uh... You've just hit the heights that you were at. You mentioned Millwall. You played at Millwall. I know other clubs you played at. How did that journey start? Where did you go from when you you were you went here to watch all the proper, let's say proper, yeah. all of the stars of the old days? But how did your journey start? Well, I was a very bright schoolboy as a footballer. I was a centre half. I played centre half for my district 
which was Black Heath in them days. And then I played centre half for Kent Schoolboys. And obviously, scouts would come and watch these games. Yes. And from the age of 12, which was 1966, I signed schoolboy forms for Millwall. And I trained two nights a week for two or three years. And at the end of that two or three years, I was offered a three-year apprenticeship. Now, Tony, you know, they're called ground staff, like academy players now. Yes. In them days, we were ground staff. We did jobs around the place, you know, and we painted the bits and pieces of pipes. And we also, I spent three years as an apprentice, and my job was to look after all the training kit. So before the pros came in in the morning, I had to make sure they had the necessary training kit. And in three years, I'm proud to say, I never cleaned a pair of boots because that was the dirty job. So I had the clean job. So the only boots I cleaned were mine. <laughs> and if, if one of the pros came in and said, can you do my studs, Tom? They're stuck. I would like learn how to take a stud off with a hacksaw and things like that. And I would give them their boots back and, and I would like make sure the studs were tightened. In the old days, you put Vaseline on a thread tone. Yes. And it, it, you know, if you left the studs in there for months, they would eventually become almost impossible to get out. Yeah. But as an apprentice, I had three fabulous years. There was 15 of us, three years running, and the camaraderie was special. I've spoken to two or three of those guys on odd occasions. I haven't seen them for 40 years. Those three years, I started on £5 a week, and then the second year was £6 a week. The third year was £7 a week, and that was it. Then after those three apprentice years, I they called me upstairs and I was offered a one year full professional contract. This was 1972. I went from seven pound a week to 40 pound a week. Oh. And I was put into the first team squad. The manager said, you are now in the official list of first team players. I was 20. The first team players were on 25 pound a point and two points for a win in them days. £25 a point and £12 such and such for place money. I was 20, Tony, and I felt like I was a millionaire. And it was fabulous. I spent two years as a full pro and training with the first team, being part of the first team. I It was a struggle to get in the first team because I wasn't tall enough. I wasn't quick enough. I realised these things years later. I used to go and knock on the manager's door and say, excuse me, boss, I'm really working hard here. Any chance? And he, he would say to me, Thomas, he always called me Thomas. The manager was Benny Fenton, who was an ex-West Ham, Leighton Orient, Colchester United, midfield player through the 50s. He would say to me, Thomas, you get rid of those love handles and we'll give you a chance. <laughs> <laughs> and Tony, I was always concerned about the size of my backside, uh, my hips, and it, it, it went with me years, my weight. Everybody thought I had a problem, like a weight problem. I didn't. I weighed 10 stone, 7. I was probably a pound or two overweight. But in them days, it was important. You know, you had to be fit and you had to please the manager. You had to look right. And... I did that with my players sometimes as I got into later life, later football. But Tony, I made my football league debut on March the 11th, 1973. I was substitute against Leighton Orient at Brisbane Road. And at half time, the manager pulled off one of the forwards, put me on in midfield to give it a bit more steel, he said. So I had to. In the Orient midfield was a lad called Ian Bowyer. Oh, and he, two years previous, he'd been playing for Notts Forest for Brian Clough. I went on, picked him up from a free kick, and he stuck his elbow on my nose. Now, I don't think it was accidental because the next thing I saw was the earth. 
I'd yeah. fallen on the floor, and the referee was a man called Jack Taylor, who'd refereed the World Cup final between yeah. West Germany and Holland. And as we were jogging back to the halfway line, he said to me, son, if you want to get your own back, don't let me see it. <laughs> and that, I'm, to be fair, I, I mean, Bowyer, I did try to give him a, a clump once or twice before the game finished. And I did call him, I did call him Ginger, oh. <laughs> which he didn't like. No, I, I said, you got the same colour freckles. <laughs> <laughs> but Tony, that was my, my day in the sunshine. Oh, how lovely. That was March the 11th, 1973. Late Norian, were they in Millwall? Were they sort of like, uh, it was that the, the needle game? No, Millwall Charlton was a needle game. Oh, right. Millwall and Charlton. Leighton Orient was in East London, so we were East London versus South London that day. Yeah. I was a proper South London attorney, as you probably know. Yeah. You know, I was, I was not, I was, I wasn't a midfield player. I used to like to play off the centre half, you know, in that yeah. Jack Charlton, Bobby Moore type of style. Yeah, gotcha. And I played hundreds of under eighteen youth team games in the South East Counties League on a Saturday morning. We played the likes of Arsenal, Tottenham, Chelsea, and I was captain of that side. And by being captain, I've sh I shook hands with some of the legends of football. Yeah. Yeah. Jimmy Cannon, Le Liam Brady, Kevin yeah. Beatty, Kevin Locke, Ian Britton. All these players went on to be legends for their club. Yeah. Kevin Beatty and myself were quite friendly we used to talk regular and occasionally i'd get a phone call and he'd say tom kevin here and i'd go kevin who <laughs> he'd go kevin Beatty." <laughs> i said hello mate he said, we got you saturday you go in i said of course yeah and i would meet up with him again and he played for england and he was a colossus tony he was a good player a colossus and He's obviously sadly passed away now. He had alcohol problems. But, you know, a wonderful career. From that moment when I was sort of 15 to when I was 25, I, I enjoyed every... I look back on it and I think, would I have done anything different? And I thought to myself, I wouldn't have eaten as many Mars bars. I would have tried to stay away from the, 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 the amount of lager I, I, I drank. Yeah. But... It was a fan. I would say to any young person now, young player, if you get the opportunity to be a professional footballer for just even five minutes, don't turn it down. And it will lead to some of the. I've got wonderful memories playing against Jimmy Greaves, Jeff Hurst. Jimmy Greaves was at Barnet, Jeff Hurst was at Telford, Gordon Banks, he was at Telford. Played against all of them. Um, you know, my career, if I died tomorrow, I'd be in heaven. Wow. I'd probably go and meet Bobby Moore and I'd say, Bobby, can I have your autograph again? <laughs> <laughs> he'd probably still be saying. And I'd probably lose yeah. that one as well. Yeah, you would. He'd still look like a Greek god, wouldn't he? Eh? Oh, a good looking guy. Colossus. I pulled up alongside him once at the South Mims Travel Services and I was, I, I bid me hooter and wave. He waved back. Yeah, it could have been anybody, yeah. but he was my hero. Bobby yeah. Moore was my hero. What I wanted to play like Bobby Moore. I wanted not to kick it out the ground like he did in the World Cup, brought it down on his chest, looked forward, found Jeff Hurst to win the World Cup. Yeah. I wanted to be that type of player. I didn't want to be just a defender. I wanted to be a quality defender. Yeah, yeah don't panic. Bring it down. Pass it inside so you don't give it away. That was me all over. When I, when I became a non-league manager, Tony, that was one of the most infuriating things that used to frustrate me. If people tried to be clever at the back, I would lose me rag and I would yeah, scream and shout. Yeah. And yet I did it myself when I was younger. <laughs> I've, had a, I've had a wonderful career, Tony. From Millwall, went on loan to Dart, spent for one month. That one month became seven years. That, that is your club, really, Tom, isn't it? I mean, Dartford is, yes. Everybody I've, associates you with other clubs. Yeah. 200 games for Dartford, Tony. Yeah. 
200 games and a lot of them as captain. And I went back to manage them and they were in a very sorry state. They were ground sharing with Gravesend and Northfleet as they were in them days. And we, they were skint, they had no money, couldn't pay the bills. And what, they've got a wonderful stadium now. Isn't it the and business? Yeah. I was very fortunate to be the manager of the team that they played the day they opened the stadium. I was at Horsham YMCA in my sort of twilight years where I was not working. And we was 4,000 people there and it was wonderful. Yeah. And they are my club. Dartford are, is in my blood. That's and fantastic. as I say, 200 games, you don't sort of, you know, that is, no, it's that is experience. That That's is wonderful. wonderful. Nuneaton one week, Year Oval another week, Burton, Boston, Scarborough. How did you, how did you cope with all the travelling, Tom? Tony, it was very, there was no M25 in those days. Mm-hmm. So if you went to Nuneaton on a Tuesday night, you had to get to Hendon. The underground set, uh, tube station at Hendon for the coach to have come that has come right through London, and you you don't know how many players miss that coach by oh. trying to get to Hendon. Hendon Central, none eaten, like three hours later playing football, wow. and yeah, the travelling was horrendous. I listen to young players now; they say oh, I can't play in that league hours from where I live. Yeah, you know. It's it's amazing. Oh, we would do Yeovil on a Monday night, and, and it was very, very tough. I was working, I was a local government officer in those days, and I had what they called flexi time. And I could miss a couple of uh, half an hour here and there, get away to get on the coach, to go, you get, get home at three o'clock in the morning, and probably been beat four. Uh, But, you know, it was wonderful. I worked in Brixton for many years for Lambeth Council. And everybody knew I was a footballer, like a non-league footballer. And I had a very nice man as a governor who was my boss, who supported Chelsea and used to help me out with time off. And, you know, in the the old Southern League, it was brutal. Mm. But it, it Kidderminster on a Wednesday night. <laughs> oh, dear. It's, it's what, no wonder I had a stroke, Tony. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my goodness me. So but you in, I enjoyed every minute of it. So you had seven years at Dartford. But yeah, you, seven seasons. You still carried on playing after Dartford, didn't you? Yes, Dartford. Dartford didn't renew my contract. I was... 34, 35, and my knees were not good. And Dartford let me go. I went to Welling United. What a lovely football club that was in them days. In the Athenian League. Now, that was the Posh Boys League. You know, there was Metropolitan Police, Edgware, Windsor and Eaton. Yes. Doff your cap on the way yeah. to the dressing room. Tommy, Tommy you'll remember yes. this. I mean, when we played Met Police, you go into their ballroom and they'd have all the silver laid out right down the middle of that big long table mm. and they wouldn't let you in there unless you had a tie on, would they? That's right, yeah. Yeah. Wow. Tony, we when I was when I eventually managed Deal and we went on that Vars run that everybody yeah. remembers. <coughs> excuse me. We beat the Met Police in the fifth round. Wow. Away. We beat them five two. And we went in that ballroom that you're talking about. Yeah. And Trevor Brookings' brother was the secretary. Yes, I remember. And uh, the, 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 they was all in their police uniforms with their epaulettes. Epaulettes on. And yeah, their pips. Yeah. I thought I'd dump in dump for speeding for him. <laughs> <laughs> but they were wonderful. You know, it was a wonderful day. And it was a day we got closer to Wembley. And the Met Police people were fantastic. They laid on the biggest spread you've ever seen in your life. That's fantastic. So this, and the Met Police had some very, very good players. They did, they did. And they weren't like the Met Police that played in the Kent League or the Kent Police. No. No. These were top quality people. To have beaten them 5-2, we scored three times in the last 15 minutes. 
Steve yeah. Marshall got a very important goal. You'll know Steve from the yes. Whitstable days. And it was just the, the spread and the the ambiance of the, after the game. There was no bitterness. And people would yeah, come like up that, and like tap you on the shoulder and yeah. shake your hand and say, we hope you get to Wembley. You deserve it. Do you know because what? Because we're a nice club. Do you know what? That's a, that's a really fascinating thing about the FA Cup or the FA Vars or the FA Trophy. The fact that you're on that journey and everybody they all everybody has their own little minute of that journey, you're yeah. dead right. When it's over, the game's over, everybody always says, wish you well in the next round, mate. Yeah, absolutely. It's the way it goes, isn't it? I I had a very good experience. We played Crook Town away in the fourth round. Now, yeah. Crook is an hour the other side of Newcastle. And their manager was a guy called Alan Shoulder, who'd had a long career at Newcastle United. Now, we beat them 3-0, and we were very, very special that day. We were tough. It was 80 miles an hour wind, or that's what it felt like. It was freezing cold, and we had to defend for our lives for the first 45 minutes. And the shoulder said to me after the game, he said to me, he said, Tom, your side played like Northerners. Oh, what a compliment. Oh, you know, well, he thought, you know, we're up from, we're on the Kent coast, and some people would have thought, oh, there, we'll turn them over. Yeah, absolutely. Southern softies and all that. We've had all that. But he said to me, you played like Northerners. Right, let's go back to your playing career. You were at Welling and you were in the Athenian League yeah. doing, the round, doing the rounds. How long did you stay at Welling for? Three years, Tony. Three years? Three years I stayed at Welling. Welling employed Tony Sitford, who was the Gravesend and North Fleet manager at the time. Yeah. And he, he was a full-time manager. Now, I'd known Tony from the Dartford Gravesend like duels. He said to me, Tom... I've got a kid in the reserves. I've got to give him a game. And he moved me on. He said, you know, I was 35. My knees weren't good. Yeah. I was very lucky. I ended up at Bromley, which was a great experience. I, I was captain for four or five years, and we played at the old Hayes Lane ground. Yeah. And that Isthmian League was a proper league. It was Dulles, a good league. Yeah. Dagenham, Wickham Wanderers. Yeah, it was a good league, yeah. Oh. You know, I was very fortunate. Again, I was skipper. I was an integral part of the Bromley side for maybe seven seasons. Wow. Again, I played another, despite the bad knees, I played another 250-odd games for Blimey. Bromley. Got released, went to two in the Mitcham, another famous old club. You know, I was drawn to these clubs somehow. Yeah. It's, I it's... turned down the offer to go to Dulwich Hamlet because it was just too difficult. I was living in uh, Dartford in them days, yeah. and Dartford to Dulwich Hamlet on a Tuesday night to train is awkward, yeah. to say the least. It is, isn't it? You know, but Dulwich Hamlet were, I played the Sutton United on loan for a month in my career, and I played alongside a guy in midfield who played 60 times for the England amateur side. And in them days, if you went up to shake hands with the referee, guy I'm talking about, Larry Larry Pritchard, his name was. If you Google him, he's got a whole page. He was England's... He played in the Olympic Games for the England amateur side. He would call the referee, sir, and that was what it was like. Sutton, Dunwich Hamlet. It was proper. It was done properly... Probably nowadays, it would be totally out of line with what goes on. Yes. But then were the days when, you know, you, you had to be proper. You know, if you didn't go around kicking people, you had to play football. Yes, definitely. And Dulwich Hamlet, Wickham Wanderers, what great, what great games they were. When I was at Bromley, we played at Wickham, we drew nil-nil, and it was probably the best result I ever had at Bromley because Wickham were all conquering. They, they went through the leagues later on when Martin O'Neill became the manager and Dagenham, played against Dagenham. They were probably one of the best non-league sides in the country. Mm -hmm. And they had some great players and you, you had to play against these people and you knew they were good players because at close, close up, you understood their ability, their touch, uh, the way they spoke to each other. 
uh, it was there was no swearing. You know, swearing was banned. You know, you went to Sutton if you blasphemed in earshot of a committee member, you were reported. And you know, now Tony, I've blasphemed once or twice in my career. <laughs> <laughs> Once or twice. Yeah, but you know, I went, I went and played with Sutton, and I was told, "Don't swear, don't what? swear out loud, even on the pitch while you're playing. Don't swear out loud. It's a family game, and you've got to be Christian." Strange. I mean, I, when I became a manager, I used to tell people, "Go and win your battles. Don't shy away from the fight. Not fight in inverted commas. You know, to me, the battle." was the battle personal. On the yeah, yeah the battle you, if you're up against someone don't give an inch battling fighting yeah and yeah, i played for millwall and that was the ethos in them, those, in them yeah. days you know don't give in to pressure don't give in to physical like and it was very i i, I took that through my career i was always I was not a hard man, but I could, I would never pull out of a tackle. I'd win me headers. I wouldn't swear. I may be under me breath. Yeah. <laughs> but it's been a varied career. I, I told you, if they took, if the referee up in the sky gave me a red card now, I'd be okay. I'd go yeah. away thinking, fantastic. Well done, Tom. When, when did you actually hang your boots up playing was Tom? I played my last game. For Herne Bay, I picked myself on a bank holiday Monday morning at Beckenham. We had no players. I was about 35. The pitch was rock hard. And I said after the game, I said to my assistant manager, Keith Lissenden, I said, Keith, I'll train. I'll put my boots on and train, but I'm not going to play no more. That's my last game. Because mm. afterwards, it was too painful. When yeah. I went home, I would, I would be cheerful with my knee being so painful but you know what it's like tony it's i was a footballer putting my boots on and playing football was what it was all about so yeah. i trained i did i had a surgeon tell me if you carry on playing and kicking balls you'll be in a wheelchair by the time you're 50. and yet i still wanted to train on thursday night tuesday well, thursday night yeah, yeah. playing the five aside yeah. I made me sub myself sub once against Greenwich Borough for Herne Bay. I was 36 and <laughs> blow me. I've got two players got injured and I had to play the whole second half oh. in central midfield. I don't think I touched it more than two times. And that was one <laughs> to kick off and one to take the throw on. <laughs> but I, I couldn't, I've, I, re I retired in my mind around about 1998. I threw my boots away and I've regretted doing that because I thought I should have had them boots on display in my house. Yes. Because have boots will travel. And I travelled from Dartford to Welling to Sutton to Bromley to Millwall. So, you know, I've been there and seen it, Tony. That's fantastic. Well, I'll tell you what, Tom. We'll stop this part of your story now. The football manager. Would you like to do that now, or should we do that? Yeah, another? let's do that now, Tony, and that's, that'd be great. Now that you've found us on Belmont Banter, every week we chat to ex-players, supporters, and invited guests for news about local football in Kent and beyond. Join your host, Tony Rouse, every week on Belmont Banter.